Welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Today is the Colorwork Crochet Hat. This is using Karen Chunky Cupcakes. And today I have a lot to share with you and including an idea if you would like to change this yarn to something else. So here we have Karen Chunky Cupcakes. Now I'm Canadian and I've not seen this yarn. So that's a full disclaimer. So Karen Chunky Cupcakes are exclusive to the United States for Michaels only. But here in Canada we have other options which I'm going to show you this particular pattern using uh, Karen Chunky Cakes. It's not the same and the level is thicker than the Chunky Cupcakes. So I'm going to give you a variation in the pattern if you would like to use that yarn but also share with you information. Everything that I'm gonna do in this pattern will be exactly the same except for I'm gonna tell you a little bit of dimension difference as far as, far as changing it out to the Cupcakes uh, version versus the Chunky <laughs> Cakes. Now try saying all that fast. So today you're going to need two sizes of crochet hooks. You're gonna need a five millimeter size H and a five and a half millimeter size I because the band is done differently. Also I'm gonna share with you a little secret. Because I've not seen the Karen Chunky Cupcakes I don't know what the dimensions are as far as the amount of yarn that can create a solid looking brim like this. So what I did is that because I used a Karen Chunky Cakes what I did here is I doctored the ball. For example this particular one here is made up of two different sections of the same ball so that I had the same color of brim. So what I decided to do is I dissected the ball and I took out those colors so that I would have a solid brim because when I tried to use just this one color there's not enough to have a, uh, a solid color. So this is called doctoring. You could call gym, uh, jimmying. You can do anything. <laughs> you, you can call it anything that you want. But what I th felt was important for me is that the color of the band stay a solid color instead of changing midway through. Your creativity you can decide what works for you. I then determined that I was never gonna use this color again in the top part of this hat. So what I've done here is that I went all the way to the top. I even applied my pom-pom but I realized that it was too tall because I was using a size up. So the Karen uh, Chunky Cakes are thicker than the Karen uh, Chunky Cupcakes. <laughs> so because of that um, there is gonna be a size difference in the height of the stitches. So I'm gonna be talking about those dimensions when we get there but pretty much the instructions stay the same except for the dimensions that you want to go for. So without further ado we're going to start off with the brim today and then we're going to then turn it and get it done. So I've already got one kind of already started here and we're going to continue and I'm gonna show you how to do all that next. So let's start and I'm going to be using a five millimeter size H crochet hook. It doesn't matter which type of yarn you're using you're gonna use the same hook. And I want you to create a slip knot and I want you just to put it onto the hook. We're gonna chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Now I want you second chain from the hook and the back hump of the chain to single crochet and I want you to single crochet in the back hump of each one of the chains all the way back. That will give you a stitch count of seven if you're ever thinking about you need to count midway through the brim. So what we need to do is that we need to create 19 and a half inches of this brim. So for if you're using the the Karen Chunky Cakes the one that you see on camera here is that it's gonna be a little bit faster because it's thicker yarn so you get to the dimension quicker and then if it's the um, Karen cupcake, chunky cupcakes, it'll be a little bit more rows to do in order to get that. You're gonna turn your work and here's how you're gonna do it. Chain one and in the back um, loop you want to place your single crochet. So if you're new to crochet both strands equal stitch but if you go in the front strand here that's a front loop and if you go in the back one that's furthest away from you that's the back loop. So go in the back loop only and I want you to single crochet and this is gonna create the ribbing look of your band. So all the way across in the back loop. So all you're just going to do is continue to work in the back loop all the way down to for 19 and a half inches. Now because this yarn is thicker the band width the height is a little hi uh, higher so you have to take that into account for your dimensions which I will talk about later. So you're gonna turn your work chain one and continue in the back loop only and you go for 19 and a half inches. So please do that and then come back here and we're gonna continue then from that process. I'll show you how to join your sides 
uh, together so that you have a full hat and then we're gonna continue our first revolution going around the hat. So without further ado, continue to do that 19 and a half inches. So once you think you're good, just take your tape measure and measure 19 and a half. So you, this here is not stretched, so just slightly stretch it a bit and you will get your 19 and a half. If it's not long enough, then you just add a few more. So I think I'm a little short, so I'm going to add a little more just to make sure I get it. And if you overstretch it, what happens is that um, if you overstretch it, um, you, it's harder to get your stitches in there to, to equal your count, but it's also going to be at a level that when you go to wear it, there's not gonna be any stretch left. It's gonna be to its max. So get to your 19 and a half inches. See you back here in, in a moment. So I wanna show you a little secret. I've now got close to my dimension. I want you around the nine and a half inch mark and because I am finishing over here, this will be the top section when I go around. So come to the opposite side and place in a stitch marker there. And the reason for that is that we need to apply 70 single crochet stitches evenly around this brim. And if you apply it here, what happens is that if you can get 35 stitches on this side of the band and then 35 stitches on this side of the band, it'll keep it in even. So what happens usually what, when people go evenly around, they are starting to space and then all of a sudden in the last section they really cram their stitches. So by using a stitch marker you can actually evenly space probably better by eye. So let's now join the two sides together. So now that I've got comfortable with my size, I want to take both sides so make sure that there's no weird twist to it and I want you to single crochet the two sides together. So just insert in and pull it through just to join it and then what you can just do is just come to the one side, and go straight across and into the other. This seam line will be on the inside of the hat and you should not have lost any counts of your stitches so then you will not be able to, um, there will not be a size difference in your band. I guess on one side versus the other. So I'm just matching them and single crocheting them together and this join will be on the inside of the hat. Once you're satisfied, I want you to keep this yarn on. I've doctored it so that I'm gonna stay with this color for one revolution and then I'm gonna change it out. So that's something that you can decide. So we're now officially done with the five millimeter size H. We're now going to move up bigger. So what I want you to do with this yarn that's holding on the end, might as well get rid of it out of the way and then you'll never have to deal with it. So to get rid of your yarn strands, just stay within that seam line. Just go straight up. and bury that in. So when you go pull things, just don't pull it to the point that it's going to warp it. So going up and down, you can just go up and down once and then therefore you can get rid of it and then just safely cut it right down into the project. So because we're looking at the inside of the project, I want you now to turn this so it's, the seam is on the inside and then just grab that yarn loop and let's get going. So you can see that this here is our halfway point. So we now have to get 70 single crochets around. So 70 single crochets around is just an eyeing up guess. So it might take you a couple rounds but my goal is, is to get to 1 to 35 when I hit this and then 1 to 35 when I hit the other section right back here. So what I have to do is be very conscientious. So uh, about 35, so about there should be about 15 or so stitches, just a little bit over 15 by the time I get to the quarter section here and then 35 by the uh, time I get to the end. It may take you a couple times to get this right. So just chain up one and just evenly space your single crochets around. So just, and start counting. So one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna stop at five for a second. So five, now I will tell you some, sometimes you need to put two stitches in one time, uh, in those same spot. So I'm gonna put another one there. So six and seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'm gonna put another one there. 11 and 12, 13, 14 and 15, 16 and 17. I'm gonna put another one there, 18, 18. So I got 30, I gotta get to 35 here. So I'm at 18, 19, 20, 21, 
22, 23, 24, 24 and I still have 11 to go. So 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 and look at that 35. This is not my first rodeo kids. I've done many of these kinds of hats. That was just a guess and you're seeing it live happening on camera. So I got 35 in. So now I gotta get another 35 in before I hit the end. So you've seen how I do it. So continue in the same manner. So take out your, your stitch marker and keep on going. Okay, once you have your 35 in for your second half, just join it to the top of the first single crochet and now I'm doctoring it meaning that I'm manipulating the color. So I'm going to trim this yarn so that I never see this brown ever again in my project. So I'm just gonna trim my yarn and just weave in my ends and then I'm gonna begin with two other colors in the same ball and I'm going to grab the remaining color then from the, the, um, the inside of the ball and the remaining color from the outside of the ball at the same time so that we can create the look that you see with this hat. So please weave in your ends and meet me back here in a moment. Okay, so let's begin and I'm going to start with the inside of the ball strand and then the second time I show up I, I'm gonna use the outside. You don't cut the yarn in between, you just drag it in underneath. So just start off with a slip knot and I want you to join it to where you finished off. We're gonna do our setup round for this one. So this is gonna get us set up. So we're just going to join it and then you got two loops. So I just pull through and then pull through two and then move on. Consider that a single crochet. It's kind of abnormal but it makes it look better. So chain one and you're going to skip one on your project and go to the second one over and single crochet. Then chain one, skip one, single crochet, second one over. Noticing that I'm going up over top of the straggler to hold it in position. So chain one, skip one and single crochet in the next. Go all the way around doing the same concept. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I've got the right counts. If you don't, just fake it because you don't wanna pull anything apart at this point. So if you just fake the first round, you can get away with anything pretty much. So chain one and then join it to the first single crochet that you started with and just pull a large loop. Now we're going to grab the next strand from the outside of the yarn ball which is a different color. So make sure the colors are not gonna be the same and you wanna create a slip knot. And what I want you to do, you gotta watch these strands here. So just grab the loop and the strand and just go into the stitch right underneath it and lay those down over top towards the one side and then just attach this yarn. So just pulling it through. Okay. And then you got the two loops, pull through and finish. It's a, it's a, um, the way that the stitch looks, I think that's the way to do it. It's not technically the way that first stitch is supposed to be, but you know, in the rules of crochet, you're, you're pretty much the artist. You can decide what's right for you. So I want you now, this is the moss stitch. So you're just gonna chain one and then skip the next single crochet and go right into the next chain one space. But because you went over the straggler there, just dig in and get that straggler that is sitting in there and make sure that's part of it and then put this other straggler down on top. Therefore it's a nice clean look. See if you don't grab that one then you have this stupid little line that's right above the brim. So chain one, so skip to the next chain one space. Make sure you grab that straggler so it's part of it and finish it off with a single crochet. And I want you to do what you just did all the way around but in the chain one spaces. So chain one and then go into the chain one space and etc. And once you bury this yarn long enough, you can just safely cut that out as well. Go all the way around using the same concept. If I can offer a little tip, this is my second time doing this hat. What I would strongly recommend to you is that I would take the yarn ball that you had and divide it in two. So just kind of pull it apart so that the center uh, separates from the outside. And then what I decided to do is that with the outside of the ball, I re-rolled it into a roller. You can do it by hand as well. Therefore you actually have physically two yarn balls that you're pulling from. Um, it doesn't tangle as much as it would as if you were leaving it and pulling it from the same ball. So that's kind of up to you. It's not impossible. Um, I just found with myself last night when I was doing the sample that it would have been easier if the two sides of the ball were actually separated and 
into two separate ones. So continue to go all the way around, see at the end of this round. So when you come back around, you're going to have this, the loop and the strand popping out of the first stitch that you see. So you're just gonna continue on and you wanna keep that toward the back side, so the inside of the hat and you're gonna go in. Now this one here is this gapping space, so this is where I'm done. So you're going to chain one and attach it to the first one, pull up a large loop like that and then let it fall to the back. Now the other one, so you wanna take both of these strands and you wanna grab the other two pieces here and just kinda switch spots to let that fall to the one side and switch. It's not as complicated as it probably looks on camera. So then you're going to pull this loop back into position. So keeping these to the one side. It's impossible to change that if you don't do it right away. So just keep it to the one side and then what you can just do is that this gapping space that you see right here is in between the two. So that's where you can start. So just going into that space, pulling it through and then pulse or two and now you just locked it. So then chain one and then skip one, go to the next chain one space and continue around doing the exact same thing. So every time you get around, you just have to switch spots. My tip for you, make sure that this is a nice tight look. You can't change it later so make sure everything looks tight now because if you have it loose then you're gonna have a really obvious seam line in your work and you don't want that. So continue now and this is the moss stitch and you're just continuing all the way around. I'm gonna meet you one more back uh, time. I'm gonna meet you back one more time and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave it to you to get the inches done. The inches are different between the cupcakes and the regular Karen chunky cakes. Cupcakes version you need six and a half inches height and the cupcakes are in the chunky cakes version it's only five and a half. And the reason for it is that the, the regular chunky cakes there are th it's a thicker yarn so that each one of these rounds are actually taller than the cupcake version. Therefore if you um, go for six and a half like I suggest with the regular cup, uh, regular chunky cakes what happens is that your hat will be too tall. So only go to five and a half inches instead of six and a half if you're using chunky cakes instead. So it's a nice little option. So I'll see you at the end of this round and carry on just like as you see it here. So I'm gonna show you the switch one more time. So chain one and leave these down. So just go right up over top of them. So like just keep them behind and attach it to the first one and then pull up a loop. Let these fall out of the way. So let's switch spots. So let's grab this other blue and let's pull that tighter. Sometimes that's kind of, because it's worked into the stitches it can be tighter than normal. Okay, so pull that in and then keep these together on the outside. Okay, and look at the project and where you're gonna go. You have to go in between these ones here. So I'm just gonna go right in there, just grab the yarn and pull, and pull through and then just tighten the straggler back up on the other side, the ones that are holding so that it looks tight. Chain one and then advance. So please, if you got the cupcake version, only go to six and a half inches now from the base here up and then if it's the regular chunky cakes, I want you to go five and a half. So this is five and a half inches at this point and then we start shaping the top from that point in there. So the topping shaping is the same for both versions. It's just the height difference is slightly different in the where you start. So please do that and I'll see you back here in a bit and uh, let's get this going. So at this part of the tutorial I wanna give you some options. So this is going at five and a half inches and then to the top. For this, this actually fits my head perfectly. So if you wanna go to six and a half inches you'll have extra space left inside the hat which gives it more of a pointy look at the top. That is completely up to you. So five and a half, six and a half is up to you. So really when you're looking at it, it looks like it's not gonna fit on your head perfectly and it really truly does and it fits nice and snug. You add a pom pom, good to go. So what we have here is the other one here I'm making Daniel's version. He's more of a brown person. I've gone my five and a half inches but if you're doing six and a half, if you're using the cupcake version, then that's where you're going to be. The remaining of this particular hat now is the same for both of the sizes. So let's begin to shape the top of the hat next. So let's begin. We're going to start off as normal and you're gonna do the first one 
So there's one. You're gonna do the next one. Make sure you chain one after in between these. So you're gonna do the next one. So that's two. Chain one and do the third one. And then chain one. The next three gapping spaces to so chain one spaces are gonna come together. So going into the next space, pull through. Go to the next space, pull through. And next space, pull through. You got three uh, loops that you have plus the original. So you have four. Pull through all of those. Chain one. And then the next three chain one spaces are each gonna be a single crochet. Sorry, make sure that you chain one in between them. So it's what you already know. And then chain one. And now the next three in a row are gonna come together. So grab it, go to the next one, and next one. And you're gonna see it's really gonna pull in. So then pull through all of them, chain one, and the next three by themselves. I want you to repeat that same idea going all the way around. So I'm coming all the way back around. I'm just keeping in line with the keeping of the repeat. And I'm just gonna put the last sections together here. Now because this is gonna be the starting one and because I'm ad-libbing from the pattern a little bit, I'm only gonna do the final two. Pull those together, chain one, and join it. As long as you're consistent in crochet, things don't really matter too much. And then pull through. And now we're going to begin then the second round or the next round or sorry, the second round of the shaping of the top. So just push this other yarn in. Let's bring it into position and let's get ready for the second round. As we shape the top of the hat, alternative rounds, meaning two, four, six, eight, are going to just be regular just moss stitching which you already have done. Now, other rounds in between also are just gonna be regular at some points. So you're going to notice that it's gonna drastically increase or decrease and then it's gonna stabilize for a bit and then drastically decrease again. So this is going to just be a regular. So we're just going to start it up as normal as you normally would and it's just a regular round. So just uh, chain one and then go into the next one. So please for this is an alternative round number two and you are just going to just continue the pattern as you know and when you hit the ones that have three together underneath, don't worry about those. Just jump right over it and go to immediately to the next one and just so that it keeps it looking in balance. So please do that all the way around for round number two. When you come back around you're just going to join it to the first one. Pull up the loop let it sit and then pull up the other one. So what we're going to do then round number three is exactly what you just did. So round three is also stabilizing round meaning that there's no uh, change to the size. So you're just gonna start off as normal. Chain one and then continue to just go to the next chain one space. So please do that all the way around. Round number three it's just a regular round as you already know it. So just joining it when I come back around in round number three, let it fall to the back. Let's pull up the next one. So this is going to be round number four. Round number four is an alternative round so that means it's just a regular round. So what's the difference of round three and four? Why is there a difference? It's because of where you're starting and the, because of the way that I'm having you start here on camera, it's not the same way that you would be doing it if you were following the pattern in person. Um, they suggest that you know you chain one and you reach on over but the way that I'm showing you how to do it here is kind of ad-libbing towards what the designer is asking you to do. So you just do round number four just as a regular round. Just continue to work your way into the stitch work and then meet me back here at the end of round number four. And round number five next that's coming up we're gonna do another decrease. So I'm just joining it at the end of round number four. Okay, pull up a loop and let's get our ready. So now round number five what we're going to do is that we're going to do another decrease. Okay, so let's get ourselves started and you're going to just start off in the first one as always. So do that one, chain one, do the next one as you normally do, chain one and then the next two spaces become together. So sorry, the next three spaces become together. So one, two and three. So just reach in, reach in and reach into all the next three spaces and then pull those all together. Chain one and now the next two in a row are by themselves. Make sure you chain one in between those and then the next three after that are together. So you're gonna see this is gonna really pull. This is what really shapes it beautifully to the head. So chain one 
and the next two. Please do that same idea going all the way around. So when you get all the way around you're just gonna have two spaces left. Just bring those together. Again I'm ad living from the pattern as I have been for most of this and it's just because I want the shaping to be closer to the head. So you're just gonna join it. Now pull through and let it relax. Let's grab the other one up. So the next rounds six, seven, and eight are regular rounds. So uh, what I'm gonna tell you to do is do the next three rounds just as a regular one that you had done like down here. So let's just start up our regular one as always. And then just jump to the next one, next space. So six, seven, and eight I want you to do now and then I'll bring you back then on number nine and then we will, number nine is the final decrease and then ten is just bringing it together. So please do six, seven, and eight as regular. So I'm coming up all the way around on round number eight. So I'm now finished. This color is technically done. So what I'm going to do is to just trim an extra long yarn tail and I'm going to get rid of this yarn now. And I'm going to just pull it tight and pull it to the inside of the project. So we have one more round to do. Round number nine. So let's grab the remaining of our last one here and let's do round number nine. So round number nine we are going to then just do the first one as normal. Chain one and then sorry just pull chain one and then the next three spaces are gonna come together. So just bring those together. And chain one and then the next one's by itself. Chain one and the next three are together. We're almost done so I'm just gonna keep the camera going. Chain one, the next one's by itself. Chain one and the next three are together. You can see it changed color right near the top of this hat which is awesome too. I like the variation. So those three are together. Chain one and I'm looking what we have. So I'm gonna put the last two together. So I'm ad-libbing from the pattern again. Okay and once you have that done chain one and attach it to the first single crochet. I want you to do a strategic idea now. Leave this as a long yarn tail and we need to pull this loop through and now put this onto a darning or a tapestry needle and we're going to pull the remaining of the top shut. Okay so the top is not gonna be very big and so you just what you wanna just do is just weave it in around and then at the end you're gonna give it a good tug and it will pull everything nice and shut. And then what's left if you would like to go a step further and make a pom pom. Um, some people like pom poms, other people don't. It's up to, it's up to people's individual creativity. I love pom poms. Um, it's very nostalgic for me wearing a pom pom as a kid and I still wear one today. I just think it's fun. I don't think they're male or female. They're just fun. So once you go all the way around just pull it and it will pull everything nice and tight. Now I just want you to go across. We're gonna be covering this with a pom pom and then just go across the other way. Pull and then go down into the project. And I'm gonna just turn this to the inside and pull it through. And then I'm just gonna weave it in and out three times. You can put a knot in there if you wish as well. So we just, I'm gonna apply a pom pom. I really want my pom pom on top. So I'm in and out three times and then I'm good to go. So any other loose uh, yarn tails that you have you wanna secure those in as well. Same concept I had you put the last color on the inside. Here you're gonna wanna secure that so it doesn't unravel. Put that onto the tapestry needle. And stay towards the inside of this project. So just stay on the inside of the hat. So one two 
and three. And any other yarn tails that are here, I want you to secure and then we'll just touch, uh, talk about and attach the pom pom next. So let's attach the pom pom and I'm just separating the strands that are attached to it already. If these strands come out on you, you can always just ram a needle through the pom pom to resecure it. So keeping the strands separate from each other, I just want you to use a crochet hook and come on the one side of the hole. Just pop it through. And pull that one set of strands through. Just keep it nice and relaxed. And then what I'm going to do then is that I'm going to use my crochet hook, pop it through the opposite side of the hole and grab the other two strands and pull those through. Carefully I'm going to, I think I got both of them in here. Yep and I do. So carefully all I'm just going to do is the inside of the hat just pull the strands through and then just tie them in a knot. It's that easy. So just give it a good tug. That's going right through the ball and the ball is actually, it's not like a, uh, a yarn um, pom pom. This is going into fabric that's in the pom pom. So it's very secure and probably just give it a couple extra good ties and then you're good to go. Once you're done, just trim. and trim and turn the hat back the way it should be and let's check out our work. So at the end you wanna give your pom pom a really good shake and then it will fluff out on you just like so so before wearing it you can just give it a good shake and this has been my first one I ever did. This has been the tutorial version as you see. Really fun. There's two different yarn uh, balls completely even though the colors look very similar to each other and you can be very personalized with your creativity. So this is my variation of the color work um, hat. This is using uh, Karen Chunky Cakes that was used but the pattern suggested Karen Chunky Cupcakes. Either one good to go and that's it for today. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.